Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy X. We have just decided to go and leave the Thunder Plains, moving on to the next temple. Well, you're out of the Thunder Plains, you shouldn't be freaking out anymore. Yep, she's relieved. You're worried about Yuna. Of course I'm worried about her. What is she thinking? The simplest answer would be... In exchange for agreeing to marry him, she hopes to negotiate with Seymour. Negotiate what? I wonder. What? All by herself? <laughs> She's strong, but Seymour is the better negotiator. Well then, why don't we do something about it? Yuna wants it this way. <sighs> I just don't get it. Doesn't she trust us? On the contrary. She doesn't want us caught up in whatever it is she's planning. <laughs> yeah. That's what I thought. But that makes me worry even more. She could just tell us. That's the way she is. She's naive, serious to a fault, and doesn't ask for help. <laughs> You're probably right. Yuna's easy to read. <laughs> yeah, she is. But hard to guard. Stand by her. Always. Slow pokes. Sorry. It's funny how calm I was. Maybe it was because I'd realized that Yuna wasn't marrying Seymour for love. Not really. It was just her duty. Something she had to do before returning to her pilgrimage. That's what I kept telling myself anyway. And well, maybe. I realized that Yuna and I'd never, you know. Yuna, let's go. So we're going to be moving into the Makalania Woods, hopefully getting to uh, the Temple of Yevon Makalani up ahead, where we can get another faith and Yuna continue her pilgrimage. But how about that conversation that Titus just had with Orm? Talking about how Yuna is planning something, and she doesn't want the rest of them involved. Oh, my controller got messed up. I'll give it a sec, it'll be fix itself. And are we good? There we go. Oh no, hold on. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we're good. The emulator I'm using kind of messes up the analog control a bit. But Yuna is planning on doing something without the uh, her guardian guardians trying to help her, and that kind of shows an interesting thing for Yuna because in the past she has always been a much more I wouldn't say passive individual, but she has always bent her will to, like, meet the expectations of other people. One, just like, uh, Lulu tends to boss her around a lot, and when Orin showed up, he sort of did the same thing. Kind of pushed her around, not like in a negative way, but she always does what people expect of her. 
But now things have changed a little bit. The dynamic is a bit different. She's trying to do something on her own. And we don't really know why. All we know is it has something that she's not willing to tell anyone. What was on a sphere that a former maester of Yevon had sort of given to her after he had died like his ghost. She goes, she viewed that inside the Thunder Plains at Rin's shop there. That's all Titus really knows, that's all anyone really knows. Is she is planning something, she wants to negotiate something with Seymour, and plans to put herself in kind of a dangerous position of being close to Seymour. Shows that she's growing more dependent, which is probably a good thing because she was kind of dependent on them to a thought, to a fault. Thinking isn't solving anything. <laughs> I do not remember that. I don't think I've ever heard that before. Thinking isn't solving anything. Nice uh, sentiment there, Tita. Titus. Thinking doesn't solve anything. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, up here, we're gonna find a bunch of, like, different kinds of creatures that we had seen before. Remember, in the Thunder Plains, we had seen a lot of thunder creatures, and in this area, we're gonna encounter a lot of water creatures. Which can be a problem, considering look at Tita's blade right there. It, do it has a water effect to it. So there are some monsters out here that if we hit with Tita's water blade, it will actually heal them instead of hurting them. Or just do less damage than you would expect. Like that little lizard thing, that should have gone down on one hit. But I'm using the wrong weapon for that. I think Waka's using the wrong weapon as well. Farewell. Warren, on the other hand, is a badass regardless of what he's carrying. No time to waste. Let's go. Okay. Yes, sir. Move on. Move on ahead. Now, in this section, there's this funky little butterfly game where you've got to go and collect these butterflies. direction. We gotta collect these little butterflies around, and there is a reason behind it. It's something that you need to do in order to gain a character's ultimate weapon. But I'm not gonna be handling that at this point in the game. I'll come back later and do that. So I'm just gonna ignore the butterfly game for now. Because honestly, this episode is gonna be nearly a half an hour long, and that's kind of a long time. Hey, look who it is. You... Have you seen Donna? Donna? Can't say I have. What's up? We got separated on the way here. Damn it all! I've got to find her! Calm down. But if anything happens to her... Running around in a panic is not going to help. Right now, you have to keep cool and search. What? Guard your emotions, then guard your summoner. You're right. Shall we search? No, I've taken up enough of your time. Thank you, Sir Aaron. What's up? Oh, I just wanted to wish him good luck. Oh, Donna's gone missing. She's kind of a bitch. But, uh, I guess you don't want her to die or anything. She was separated from her guardian, Barthello, and now... It's not gonna bode well for her being missing. What in the hell is this? 
Oh, it's the butterfly man. A butterfly with rainbow wings will lead the way to secret things. See the counter that will, uh, oh, okay. You go and you catch a butterfly, and then you have, like, a timer to go catch another one. You know, I'm not going to be doing that. Now, Donna's gone missing. Remember, Donna was another summoner, kind of a horrible human being as well. But this isn't the first time we've heard of summoners going missing. The last time there was talk about summoners going missing outside of... I guess it was Mushroom Rock Road. That was a while ago. And it turns out it was the owl bed that were kidnapping the summoners. We don't know why they're kidnapping the summoners. It doesn't seem like a kind of a good thing to do. And most of the stuff we've seen so far kind of perpetrates the owl bed as being kind of these horrible human beings that uh, go and kidnap people and are trying to stop the pilgrimage for whatever reason. I can't think of a good reason why they're doing it right now. But, uh, who knows why this is uh, happening. Let's save. Welcome! Holiday prices on all items in celebration of Maester Seymour Guado's wedding. Yeah, let's see what you got. Yeah, I'm not gonna do this. Okay, now you head over in this direction here, and what do we have? Albed Primer. 15. U to O. I don't know what a side began is, but we're it. Wait. What it is here. here. Somewhere. What's here? Something you should see. But, Sir Oren... It won't take long. This place, it's just water, isn't it? This is what spheres are made of. It absorbs and preserves people's memories. What's that? Fiends are also attracted to these places. It's time for a boss battle, and I cannot think what the hell Orin was thinking bringing us over this direction, and why he's facing the wrong direction right now. That seems a little weird. Now, remember we were fighting mostly like water or ice or whatever monsters in this area. So you kind of expect this thing, especially since it looks like a big pool of water floating in the sky. Where are you going? you'd kind of expect it to be a water monster. And it's using water attacks right now, so... Oh, we have a water monster! That's not the case. It's actually like a multiple... types of... Oh, anyway. This overdrive never works. Because my analog control's messed up in the emulator. Okay, you hit this thing with an element, or at just random times, I think, it'll actually change its element. What element is it right now? I don't know. We're gonna have to wait till it attacks. It's not water anymore, that's all we know. Okay, it's ice. And it's gonna do those physical attacks. 
until you figure it out, this uh, monster is going to be kind of a pain. Oh, see, now that's ice. Titus' new weapon uh, does no damage. Oh. This battle is going to take a while. Lightning Strike, that's what we want. I'm not quite sure that's what we want, but it's apparently what I thought at the time. Yes, it was the wrong idea. <laughs> oh, that's pretty stupid of me. Ooh, better, somebody better go and heal him. Yep, this battle's going to take a while, and I kind of fumbled around with it a little bit, because I couldn't quite remember the strategy for defeating this thing. So in the event that you feel like skipping this fight, go ahead and jump ahead to the 25-minute mark, and that'll bring us right to the end of this, and you can see what happens after that. Oh boy, this battle was embarrassing. It took forever. Just pecking away at Titus's health, aren't you? I always did like this battle system. Like the one in the entire game, not particularly this battle. This kind of weird conditional turn-based battling system. Kind of replacing the active time system that the Final Fantasy games had used up since, I think, uh, what was it, Final Fantasy V? Up until Final Fantasy IX, where there was kind of an active time bar building up for each of your characters, and that's going to be building up regardless of whether you're attacking or standing still. So you kind of had to be quick with your actions and choosing them. This game, of course, did away with that and replaced it with this sort of thing where each action you do 
requires a certain amount of time to do and recover from. Like using items is a very quick action, so you'd be able to perform another action a lot quicker. And on the right side of the screen, you see the the estimate of how the battle is going to be played out, given whatever choice you use. I think that was pretty cool because it, it let you go and sort of um, plan out your attacks. Like, if I do this with this character, and this with this character, and this with this character, I'll be able to have another turn before the boss gets another chance to attack. Now, if I'm remembering the game Xenosaga, it's been a while since I played that, but I think they had a kind of a similar concept. I remember arranging my attacks around in a certain way in order to get certain results. If anyone's played the game Xenosaga recently and can remember if I'm remembering right or from full of shit. Let me know. <laughs> uh, yeah. In the game, you'll notice that Titus has been changing, like, the most out of all of the characters. And that kind of makes sense since he's the main character of the game. But it's not just his personality that's changing, it's the way that the other characters are thinking about him that's changing as well. Until rather recently, the only people that have really considered Titus to be anything other than a liability would be Yuna and Orin. Particularly Lulu looked down on Titus as being like a pain in the ass that shouldn't be around. That probably has something to do with the fact that he looks like her old dead fiancé, but... It's been shown like the... <laughs> there, that's a good thing to use elemental magic on it. But Titus has been showing himself to be a capable guardian, not just a pain in the ass whiner that's following them around. So they're all sort of warming up to him. So it's not just the change in Titus himself that's significant, but the other, how the other characters see him. It absorbs all spells except its one weakness.
And there we go. That thing is down. But what do we have here? What did we do that entire thing for? Eject sphere? What the hell is that? It's like Yuna and Kamari got the biggest benefit out of that. And on level two's key sphere. Yay. Whoa, this is old. Don't know if you can play it back. Jacked. Left it here ten years ago. <gasps> play it back. Mm hmm. What are you taking? Well, you said it was going to be a long trip. We'll be seeing a lot of neat things, right? So I thought I'd record it all in this. To show to my wife and kid, you know. This is no pleasure cruise. Hey, Braska. Ain't this supposed to be a grand occasion? Where are the cheering fans, the crying women? This is it. Too many goodbyes. People think twice about leaving. If you say so. Well, it better be a lot more colorful when we come back. A parade for Braska, vanquisher of sin. <laughs> we should go. Day will break soon. Wait. Yeah? Jack loved you. Oh, come on, please. He just didn't know how to express it, he said. Enough about my old man, okay? I just thought you should know. Okay. Thanks. Well, maybe Jack wasn't as big of a douche as he just makes him out to be. Anyway, we're going to be seeing a few more of those spheres later on in the game. Showing... Jack and Braska's and Oren's trip ten years ago to defeat Sin. And we're maybe going to see those in the future episodes, but for the moment we're going to bring this one to an end, so tune in for the next episode and we'll head up to the Makalania Temple.